Hello everyone, Colin Cadet here for Woodwork Web. I came across a picture of this several months ago, little arts and crafts style end table, but look it even has a little magazine rack in the bottom. And I said one of these days I'm going to make a table like that, and today's that day. So stick around and see how I make this great little arts and crafts end table. Well let's get started on this build. Now I don't have any two inch material to make the legs because I want them to be an inch and about an inch and a half by an inch and a half wide. And the best way to do that is to use a trick that Gustav Stickley used um, way back when he was making furniture and that was to take a board like this and basically you take it cut the strips off that you want and then bring it together like that, glue it together. Uh, this isn't the right width but it gives you an idea. The reason we try and keep it on the same board is because then we have a much better chance of matching material and grain. So that's what I'm going to do and it's over to the table saw. I've installed my ripping blade, I've set the distance of my fence and the blade height and I did a video on how to select table saw blades uh, quite some time ago. I'll put a link to that for those of you who haven't seen that. So I've just laid some thin plastic over top of the bars and I just use this kind of plastic here and it's just to keep the, the glue and the bars from reacting and leaving marks on the wood. So let's have a look at the wood that I have here. Now when I took it off the saw I kept it together so that when we go like this it's now book matched at that side. So I can just go each one of these and the wood actually lines up very nice and, and matches. Uh, the legs don't necessarily match but they're going to be apart anyway and but the legs look very good. So what we need to do now is to glue them all together and I need to put a liberal amount of glue on each one. I'm not going to make you sit through <laughs> every one of them but we'll do up one of them and then I'll go ahead and finish them up. Now I need to take a minute to trim all of those pieces to length and rather than try and set up a stop on my tables or on my sliding miter because I need these to be all exactly the same length it's quicker and easier to do it on the table saw so I've changed blades to my cross cut blade now and I'm just going to start running those through. While the top is drying, I'm going to clean up one edge of the glued edge for the leg. So I'll use this side as my reference against the fence and this side will get plain down. Then I'll go to the table saw to make it parallel on each side and then probably to the plane or just to clean it up a little bit.
it's time for me to cut the dados now and I started off by marking the ends you can see I marked where the face side was but then I thought you know it's a lot easier for you to see tape on here so what I've done is I've marked where I know the dados need to go on each of these pieces of wood and I know that the face side always wants to be on the outside like that and that way when I put them all together they'll all be equal now I've run some tests on this and I've got the I do have the dado in the center but you know what um, in the off chance that it's off a little bit this way we'll know that everything's going to line up perfectly so I'll run that one through like that. Then when I go to the next piece, of course, that wants to be on the outside, but look, the mark is up there. So all that means is that I need to flip that around like that. And that way I know all of the dados are going to line up for the pickets. So there's the two face sides and you can see when we look at that they line up just perfectly. Now if we flip them around just for fun they should line up but they might be off. Yeah they might be off. A, well no they're not. They're pretty good. <laughs> anyway that's done. I like to put a chamfer on the bottom of all my legs. It looks nice, but more than that, it protects the legs from fraying if it gets moved along on the floor. Now that all the pieces are cut and sized, and I've even sanded them, I'm going to dye all of this wood an amber color. And I won't make you sit through all of this coloring. Now I have some of my pieces here. I'm going to pre-finish all of the pieces uh, and then we'll do the final assembly. And I'm not going to make you sit through all of this finishing process, but just so you understand, this I'm using Osmo, for those of you who are new to my channel. Uh, one of my favorite uh, finishing uh, products, finishing oil. It's a rub-on sort of oil and we rub against the grain and, until we get it coated and then we run with the grain. It does a, just an excellent job. This is actually a product that they use for finishing floors, so it's uh, very strong and uh, a very durable and just a beautiful sheen. Well, I've got a couple of coats on all of the parts of Osmo, but now it's time to do the assembly. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use my doweling jig and the reason that I like to pre-finish is because it does such a nice job and it's so easy to work when you pre-finish before you assemble. You need to be a little bit more careful with the parts so you don't bang them up, but uh, we're going to set that up and we'll get drilling some dowels. Now I want to make sure I don't make any mistakes when I'm drilling these holes, so I've gone along and put my famous blue tape on all of the sides that are going to be drilled, and I've set up my doweling jig. And I'm going to start drilling. And the nice thing with this is I can drill these holes, then just slide it down to the end of the leg and drill the bottom holes. Well, as try as I might, uh, I still made <laughs> a little mistake. Uh, not a huge one and an easy one to fix. And, and maybe it's good that I did make it because now I can show you what to do if you do that. Uh, these holes that I drilled, you see how this one is pretty close to the end here and this one's far away. They should be the other way around. That, that little 
bit of gap should be at this side. So I need to re-drill all these holes. So all I did was fill them with glue, put some dowels in. I'm going to let them sit for about half an hour and I'll use a very fine saw and just cut them off and just re-drill them. And you know what? They'll be great. You won't even, you won't, of course you won't see it, uh, but it'll be just as strong. Well, our little table's coming along quite nicely. I've got all the pickets in and they're all nicely spaced. I haven't fastened the top on yet. I'm going to be using this metal hardware to do that. And then this wood that I have here for the bottom, I don't want this wood to distract from the pickets and the look of this. So I'm going to paint this black and I think that way it will deflect from any more wood color. Well, I put the final coat of Osmo on and it just brought it to just to life. I just love that uh, Osmo finish. And we'll put that bottom deck in there. There we go. I don't know if you can, yeah, you can see from there how it, uh, it still highlights the, uh, the pickets in there. So that's good. That's what we wanted to see. Well, furniture is always best viewed when it's in the place that it should be sitting. So in this case, the table obviously is sitting on the floor and uh, that gives you a good view of what it's going to look like. Uh, and I really, I really do like this table. When I first saw it, I thought that's something I'd like to build someday. And uh, today's the day. So I'm Colin Cadet for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.